Hello and welcome, I'm Andrew and in this video we are going to be converting this Epson printer into a dye sublimation printer and I'll tell you briefly before we get into it why the Epson versus something like a Canon. Now, I have a larger Epson uh, 1430, an older model that can print larger but the technology in an Epson allows you to use dye sublimation because it doesn't use heat to inject the ink onto the paper or substrate, whatever you're using. Canon printers use heat to push out the ink onto your page. The heat comes later with the dye sublimation process. But what else is cool is using the EcoTank versus cartridges. I have dealt with refilling cartridges and it is awful. I hate it. So I love this whole system here. If this goes well, I will be converting the 1430 to a dye sublimation printer just because this does letter size and legal size sheets and you can get an EcoTank Epson. I'll put links for all of this in the description below. You can get a tabloid size uh, 13 by 19, which is actually larger than tabloid. Uh, size sheets. So if you want to do larger dye sublimation, but for now I'm going to be doing things like mouse pads and mugs, smaller stuff like that. So when you get your Epson EcoTank printer, you're going to be getting a set of ink. We're not going to be using this ink, but we are going to be using the bottles. This is when you order your dye sublimation ink comes in bottles like this but I'll show you the eco tank has specific nozzles that are kind of a proprietary style and so I'm going to be putting this genuine ink in bottles I'm not just going to dump it down the drain there is value to this ink um, not to me but I can turn around and sell it but you don't want to sell the bottles you want to keep these bottles because of the nozzle so we're going to go ahead and make the transfer and I'll show you that right now. One thing before we get going though, I have links to everything that I'm going to be talking about in the description below. So if you're looking to buy any of this stuff of what I'm using specifically, you'll know exactly. I'll have the links right there. Okay, so now we are going to go ahead and work with the black ink. So we have our bottle with our funnel. And you can just squeeze it, but what you can also do is twist this cap off. Like that. Black ink actually isn't black. It's actually... Uh, kind of a combination of a lot of colors. There is black ink that is genuine black. It's made out of carbon based material. So you really are getting a true black. But typically, if you were to spread this thin, real thin, it would be dark purple. See that purple hue that I was saying? So now we'll just let these dry out. I'm not in a huge rush, so I'll just let them air dry. I could blow some compressed air and get it done even quicker, but we'll let them dry out. Then we'll add the sublimation ink.
Okay, now there we have it. We can go on to the printer now and put the ink in the actual printer. So here we have the printer. This part just flips down and that exposes the refill locations. Now, there's also an ink level here that you should watch just to make sure that you aren't overfilling this. Let's go ahead and get started. And they made it so these nozzles align with the nozzle there. So you can't, well, you, I'm sure you can still make a mess, but it's harder to make a mess. Just make sure that you put black into black. Every color into the correct color. So we have it in there. So it's literally pouring in right now. I'm not doing anything. I'm not squeezing the bottle. It's just draining right into there. Just put it on, fit it on, and it will start filling the yellow tank. Very easy. So it's worth keeping these bottles just to be able to do that. And finally, cyan. This is going a lot easier than I thought it would. Now, when you're printing, you want to make sure you don't get below that line. If you run out of ink and you keep printing, you can damage the print head. It's called ink starvation and you can run into all kinds of problems with your printer. It may never work the same or it may not work at all. So it's important to make sure you keep your tanks full or topped off. Uh, you don't want it to get down into the danger zone, if you will. And this that's what this uh, little blurb here describes. Don't let the ink level get too low or you will damage the printer. So there you have it. That was the process of converting a dye Epson printer to a dye sublimation printer. The EcoTank makes it very easy. Uh, it was a lot less messy than I thought. A little time consuming switching the inks, but now I don't have to. These will be permanently dye sublimation inks and I'm gonna mark them just in case I end up ordering more bottles with ink. I don't wanna get them confused. But I'm going to be doing a lot of videos on dye sublimation and uh, just all kinds of experiments. What can you do? What can't you do? Do's and don'ts, all kinds of products. So if you want more videos like this, click subscribe, click the follow button and the notification bell. Let me know what you would like to see or any questions that you have in the comment section below in a future videos. And I look forward to seeing you. Thanks for watching. In the, com in the description, I have links to everything that I used in this video. If you want to pick it up, that's exactly what I'm using here. And uh, till next time, thanks for watching.